Are you on level thyroxine but still gaining weight? Believe it or not, this is a big problem for a lot of people. But how can you be gaining weight on a medication that is supposed to increase your metabolism? Is this even possible? Absolutely. The truth is that level thyroxine doesn't automatically increase your metabolism. And studies show that most people who take it do not lose any weight. Worse than this, some people actually gain weight when they start taking it. Today I'm going to explain why this phenomenon occurs and what you can do about it if you think it's happening to you. First thing that you need to understand about level thyroxine is that it contains a thyroid hormone that is considered to be inactive. By itself, this thyroid hormone doesn't do anything except act as a reservoir to be turned into a more active thyroid hormone known as T3. When doctors prescribe level thyroxine, they are doing so with the intent that your body will take that inactive thyroid hormone that's in it and turn it into this active thyroid hormone that I just mentioned. But that doesn't always happen. In fact, many thyroid patients who take it are unable to activate that T4 and turn it into T3 and have what we call a thyroid conversion problem. To make matters worse, some thyroid patients take that very thyroid hormone that's found in level thyroxine and turn it into an anti-thyroid metabolite known as reverse T3. And reverse T3 acts to block the binding of T3, the good thyroid hormone, on your cells. The more reverse T3 that you have in your body, the worse you will feel and the less functional your thyroid will be. So how does all of this relate to level thyroxine and weight gain? We can look at a few studies to help us understand this connection. Take this study for instance. In it, thyroid patients were given a T4 only thyroid medication like level thyroxine and treated based on their TSH, much like every single one of you listening to this right now. The researchers then tested the resting energy expenditure of these patients both before they were taking the thyroid hormone and after they were given it and after they suppressed their TSH. And do you know what they found? They found that thyroid patients taking thyroid medication even with a suppressed TSH, did not see an increase in their metabolism or their body weight. This would run counter to what you would expect, especially if you know that thyroid hormone is one of the major regulators of metabolism in the body. Either physiologists have been wrong for centuries about what thyroid hormone does, or it may have something to do with the type of thyroid hormone that these patients were given. In other words, would these same patients have lost weight if they were given a different type of thyroid hormone instead of level thyroxine? That's a more interesting question and one that was answered in this study. In this study, patients were given either a T4 only thyroid medication like level thyroxine or a desiccated thyroid extract like armor thyroid and evaluated over a period of time. They found that those patients who were using the desiccated thyroid extract like armor thyroid experienced a modest amount of weight loss to the tune of about three pounds compared to the people who were taking a T4 only thyroid medication like level thyroxine. Now this may not sound like a lot of weight loss because it's only three pounds, but remember it occurred without any other interventions taking place. And this is exactly what you would expect if you were taking a thyroid hormone and it increased your metabolism. These results better support the idea that thyroid hormone supports metabolism. They just also suggest that some medications are more effective than others at doing this. But we don't have to stop here. There's one more study that's worth mentioning. This one evaluated thyroid patients who are taking either T3 only medication or T4 only medication who were given equivalent doses based on the TSH and then evaluated over time for their cholesterol and their body weight. This study showed that the patients who were taking the T3 only thyroid medication saw more weight loss and had a lower cholesterol level compared to those people taking the T4 only medication like level thyroxine. In other words, pound for pound and even with equivalent dosing, T3 is far more effective at managing weight than T4. Practically speaking, this explains why most people who take level thyroxine experience no change to their weight or even gain weight when they start taking it. This may be news to you, but it isn't for most doctors. They are just unfortunately afraid to prescribe T3, which is why it's important to note here 
that in the study I just mentioned, those people who were taking T3 did not experience any negative side effects related to the different medication that they were taking. This matters because many doctors will claim that T3 medications cause more side effects and that's the reason they don't prescribe them as much. These three studies do not prove that level thyroxine will automatically or necessarily cause you to gain weight if you take it, but they do shed light on how it's unlikely to help you lose weight. When you combine this fact with the fact that many thyroid patients who are taking thyroid medication are being undertreated and that they are not taking full advantage of lifestyle changes like diet and exercise, it's easy to see why many thyroid patients report weight gain when taking level thyroxine. The good news is that you do not have to accept this change in your weight when taking it because there are several things that you can do about it. Step one is to check your free T3 and your total T3. The absolute best way to determine if level thyroxine is working for you is by checking these two lab tests. The reason it works is simple. Remember, level thyroxine only contains T4 thyroid hormone, but in order for that thyroid hormone to be used, it must be converted and activated into T3. So if you are someone who is taking level thyroxine and you are not seeing an increase in your free T3 or total T3 afterward, then it is very likely that your body is having a hard time activating it. And we know from the studies I just mentioned that if your T3 level remains low, that you're not going to experience that benefit to your metabolism. Unfortunately, many doctors are unwilling to order these tests, usually because they don't really know how to interpret them, which is where step two comes into play, and that is to check your basal body temperature and resting heart rate. You don't necessarily have to check these two things, especially if you're able to get your free T3 and total T3 tested. But if you can't for whatever reason, or if you want a quick way to assess your T3 status, then you can look into these two options. Both your resting heart rate and your basal body temperature can be used as proxy measurements of global thyroid function. They aren't perfect by any means but they are a down and dirty way to assess whether or not your body is taking level thyroxine and turning it into T3. They work because as T3 levels increase, so too should your basal body temperature and your resting heart rate, and both of these correlate with your metabolism. You will know pretty quickly if your body is not using level thyroxine because your basal body temperature will be less than 98.6 degrees and your resting heart rate will be somewhere in the 50s. Someone who has normal T3 levels will experience a normal basal body temperature and will have a heart rate somewhere in around the 70s. Step number three is to create a more comprehensive thyroid hormone routine. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty easy to help level thyroxine do its job. All you need to do is mimic the thyroid hormone production of the healthy thyroid gland. This makes a lot of intuitive sense. After all, if you wanna feel better, why don't you match what happens in a healthy person with a normal thyroid gland? But very few doctors and patients actually do this. We know that the healthy thyroid gland produces a combination of thyroid hormones, including T4, T3, and T2. But when you take level thyroxine, you are only getting one of these thyroid hormones, and that's T4. But the reality is that you can take all three of these thyroid hormones, and thyroid patients who do this often feel much better than those who do not. For most people, it looks something like this. 80% of your total thyroid hormone dose should be as level thyroxine or some other T4 equivalent. Practically speaking, this means taking around 80 to 100 micrograms of level thyroxine. 20% of your remaining thyroid dose should come as T3, usually in the form of lyothyronine. Practically speaking, this means taking a dose somewhere between 5 and 20 micrograms per day. On top of your T4 and T3, an extra 100 to 200 micrograms of T2 as 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine should be taken as well. T2 is the only thyroid hormone that is available over the counter and can actually be purchased as a supplement. I've already done the research to come up with these doses and these ratios so you don't need to worry about it. But what I can tell you is that they are based on a combination of what the healthy thyroid gland produces and what I've seen thyroid patients feel better taking. Some deviation from these ratios may be needed, of course, but this is the best place to start. Does all of this mean that level thyroxine will never work? Not at all. There are definitely people who get by just fine 
only taking level thyroxin and who experience no symptoms while taking it. You really won't find these people around here though, because as a percentage of the whole, they're relatively small at about 20%. And they don't often go around looking for how to lose weight while taking level thyroxin, because that's not a problem that they have. But the truth is that level thyroxin is fine for a minority of thyroid patients who have no problems activating T4 into T3. What's key here is understanding that just because level thyroxine doesn't work for many thyroid patients doesn't mean it's a bad medication. Unfortunately, this is the conclusion that many thyroid patients jump to. It's not that level thyroxine is bad, it's just that your body has a hard time using it. But this problem can be solved and supported with the addition of the other thyroid hormones that I just mentioned. So don't make the mistake in thinking that you must take a certain type of thyroid medication or that there is some best thyroid medication out there. After all, level thyroxine is incredibly easy to get and it's incredibly cheap. In a perfect world, all thyroid patients would be using the most highly usable form of T4 as tyrosine sole, along with a combination of lyothyronine and T2, but we don't live in that world and not everyone has access to these medications. So in the meantime, don't be afraid to play around with level thyroxine and these other thyroid hormones if that's what you have access to. I have seen plenty of thyroid patients get back to feeling 100% even while taking level thyroxine. Yes, they may need the addition of other thyroid hormones like T3 and T2, but it's still possible. By the way, if this is the first time you're hearing about T2, then I'd recommend checking out this video next. It discusses the amazing benefits of this thyroid hormone and how it works to activate your metabolism when you take it.